much. Thanks so much. Uh, so as, uh, as Andrew said, what I study is cooperation. Uh, cooperation is completely central to our lives, from the cells in our body, up through our personal relationships, our professional relationships, and global level issues like environmental conservation. What all these things have in common is that they're non-zero sum. Everyone's better off when everyone cooperates. But at the same time, cooperation is individually costly, and that makes it a challenge. And so we're left with the question, what can we do to try and make people more willing to pay individual costs to benefit the common good? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about some work that I've done that addresses that at both a macro level and a micro level. Starting at a macro level, you can look at what about the structure of interactions makes it actually in your own interest to cooperate. For example, what happens if two people interact repeatedly? then if I help you today, you'll be inclined to help me tomorrow. And if not, then not. Or if they say that we interact just once, but there's a third party uh, observing us, then if I help you, they'll be more likely to help me in the future. Or imagine that you're embedded in a social network. Then if you help the people that you're connected to, then in the future, other people will want to link to you, and you'll gain social capital. And if not, you'll be excluded. And I should say for all of these uh, mechanisms, there's both theoretical work using math models and computer simulations and empirical work using behavioral experiments demonstrating their power for promoting cooperation. What they all boil down to is the idea that future consequences exist for your actions today. And so often it pays for you to be cooperative because of the long run benefits you accrue. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears to a more micro level and ask what's going on inside people's minds when they're faced with these kinds of social dilemmas. And this is a sort of age-old question about human nature, uh, where one perspective says that we're selfish animals, and the only way we get ourselves to do the right thing is by using our rational self-control to rein in our greedy impulses. Whereas the opposite perspective says, no, we're intuitively cooperative, we're predisposed towards cooperation, and then the calculus of self-interest uh, undermines that. And so I'm going to show you some empirical evidence that uh, addresses these questions. Before I start with that, I want to explain how we measure it using an approach from uh, game theory called the public goods game. You have a group of people. Each person gets some money. And they can either keep that money for themselves, or they can contribute it to the public good, in which case it gets doubled and then split evenly by everyone. This represents the non-zero-sum nature of cooperation. Everyone's better off now. There's twice as much money in the group as a whole. But you only have half what you would have had if you just kept everything for yourself. So it illustrates this tension between what's best for the individual and what's best for the group as a whole. And then uh, to address this question of whether cooperation uh, comes naturally or requires self-control, what we do is we have people uh, interact in this way. We give them money. They choose how much to contribute. And then we look at how much the amount they contribute, which is shown uh, on the y-axis, varies as a function of how long it takes them to make their decision with the idea being that decisions that are made quickly uh, reflect more intuitive processing, whereas decisions that are made more slowly involve more reflection and deliberation. And what we see is this very clear relationship where people that respond quickly cooperate a lot, and then the longer uh, you take to reflect, the more selfish you get. Now in this, <laughs> right, so watch out. Uh, now, in this case, it's, that's just a correlation, but there really is a causal relationship. We've lots, done lots of other experiments showing that if you make people more intuitive, it makes them more cooperative. If you make them more reflective, it makes them more selfish. Uh, and also, I should point out, this isn't just with Harvard undergrads. We use the online labor market Amazon Mechanical Turk to recruit thousands of subjects from around the world, and we consistently observe these results. OK, so this raises the question of why. Like, why are we intuitively cooperative? And this is where the two parts of the talk come together. Uh, in the first section, I was presenting evidence that we live in a world where usually it's in your own self-interest to be cooperative. And so given that, it makes sense that we would wind up internalizing cooperation as our default for social interaction. So uh, to, to summarize, I showed you evidence that we live in a world where really nice guys finish first, and intuitively we understand this. But uh, our sort of rationality can often lead us astray uh, to the detriment not only of ourselves, uh, but also the people around us. And really, the take home message from this is that uh, you, know, you can leverage these mechanisms in this research uh, to really fundamentally change the way we approach uh, cooperative dilemmas and collective action problems, both in our personal lives, our professional lives, and at a global scale. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. See you.